Okay, welcome back everybody uh, to another installment of your weekly videos on how to do something on a race car incorrectly. So today, uh, Brian's over here as usual and we're going to set up the gears for the race car. Um, I've done it a million times so I don't need to know how to do it again. So I'm going to show Brian how to do it and a large portion of this video is going to be myself narrating while he does the work. How cool is that? So. Um, the only difference in this particular gear set setup is we're going to use a solid crush sleeve on the pinion um, and the other video link in the description or link for the card up here uh, is a crush sleeve type rear end which is in the S10. So we're going to show you how to shim that up correctly and uh, get it established so that the nut doesn't back off on you and tear up all your shit. So here we go. Check it out. Now the first thing we got to do, Brian's got the first pinion uh, race ready to go in the case. And I made a rhyme. First things first, we put the races in the case, we put the seal in the case, we flip the case over, put the other race in, that bearing is already on the pinion. So we're going to go ahead and do that now, Brian's going to get that installed. And the important part is to remember you keep it square in the case as much as you can. Bigger piece of pipe. That's what she said. On the ball, Junior. <laughs> I saw you did something. Felt solid. Yeah, it looks like it's in all the way there. Okay, now that we've got the the first race put in the case, we got to grease the bearing up a little bit, drop it in place. It's probably not even necessary on this because this thing will be submerged in grease or gear oil before the car even moves. Um, so it's a matter of preference, I guess, at this point. I've always put grease on it and probably always will. So here we go. We'll get the grease on this, drop it in place, and put the seal in to cover it up. Okay, now that the front race is ready, the front race is already in the case. Seal is in the case. Now Brian's going to put the upper bearing or the back pinion bearing in, the bigger one of the two. Process is just the same. Uh, he's going to tap this thing in. A little bit at a time, side to side, front to back. So the, the obvious part here is, is that you need to use something really soft like an aluminum, copper, or brass bar to drive these races in place. You don't want to hit it with another punch or a chisel because it will fracture the race or the chisel and uh, that's never a good thing. So we've got both races pounded in place. Um, the bearing is already on the pinion and in this particular case I know that the motorsport gears nine times out of ten will set up perfectly with a 28,000 shim. Um, so I've already got that in place and we're ready to set the pinion in. The ring gear is already installed on the spool so all we have to do is pretty much set it in place and test the fit out on it. Okay so in this particular case Brian's getting ready to put the the this thing, the yoke. Yep. He's gonna put the yoke on it without a crush sleeve for now and then we're using an old pinion nut to tighten everything down while we set the gears up. I'll explain why we do it that way momentarily when we set it up. Okay so we got the yoke on it and the old pinion nut tightened down where the yoke turns freely and there's no slack in the yoke in and out this way. Um, so the reason for that is if you're using a crush sleeve, you don't want to crush the crush sleeve yet. Um, if you're using a solid shim or a solid crush sleeve, then we don't want to mess with that yet either because we want to set the gear pattern first and know that it's good so that when we put the solid sleeve in it and we take away all the lash we know, or all of the pinion slack this way, we know that the pattern is still going to be good. The pattern will probably change a very small amount uh, with the pinion drawing in further, but it's only going to be a couple thousandths of an inch, if anything. So now we're going to go ahead and set the, the spool in place with the gear on it, and we're going to set the spool left to right, or the backlash in this case, and it should turn out to be pretty good, but we're going to do that now, see where we're at, and then we're going to set up the crush sleeve. Okay, at this point, we put the side shims in, 
that we had in there to begin with. Um, and it didn't have any lash, so we took the shims out and we switched them side for side, which is often will get you back where you need to be if you have the original shims that came out of the case. Now, uh, walking the ring gear back and forth, if you listen, it sounds like it's got a, a pretty reasonable amount of lash in it. We're going to put the dial indicator on it and check it, and we're also going to put the paste on the ring gear, and we're going to check and see what the pattern looks like. Um, Right now, the pattern, the gears don't feel real good in this thing. It's got a little bit of a, a weird bind feel to it, which usually means pinion depth. So, um, rather than guess at it, we're going to put the paste on it and check it out. But first thing is we're going to go ahead and throw the, the dial indicator on here and see what kind of lash we got while we're here. Okay, so we've got the indicator set up on it. And you got to make sure in this particular case that the body of the indicator isn't touching the gear or anything like that. And we have about half of the travel of the indicator taken up um, and we should only be seeing maximum of six or eight thousandths backlash or lash uh, so I'm going to scoot up and look at the indicator and it is approaching 11 yeah 11,000 so <clears throat> in a race car I would tend to believe that that's a little bit on the loose side but that's okay for now because we want to check and see what's going on with this uh, gear pattern so now we're going to go ahead and mark it up with the paste and roll this thing around and see if we can find out what's going on there. You ready to do it? Yeah, go ahead. Three or how many You're teeth? going to mark up about three teeth, both sides real good. Come on now, we ain't baking a cake. Let's do this. Get in there and get you some. So I tend to make it a little thinner. Okay, so you can actually see where it's touching perfect. Yeah, and then you want to you keep it going the same direction. So you can distinguish your brush marks from the what the gear the actually does. Got you. Okay. There. Okay. Okay. okay, so there's two terms that they use when setting up a gear, and that's the drive side and the coast side. The drive side is the convex side, the coast side is the concave side. Uh, the concave side is not near as important as the concave side of it is, or convex side, I'm sorry, because when the power is applied, you want as much of each tooth touching each other as possible, and that's what keeps the gears together. Um, if you had to compromise there, you would want a little bit heavier towards the interior of the gear, because as the power applies, the force is generally spread throughout. If it's on the exterior of the tooth it's already that's as far as it's going to go it's leaning on the thinnest part of the gear it has the most advantage on it and that's when it's most likely to break in my opinion so uh, this pattern actually turned out a lot better than i thought it was going to so what we're going to do is we're going to pull the main caps off one more time we're going to tighten up the lash and see what we end up with after we tighten up the lash i'm going to bring you in for a close-up so you can see what the pattern looks like and see what we're trying to achieve so we're going to go ahead and do that right now okay so we're getting ready to put the solid crush sleeve in place and i was just explaining to brian off camera um, we're going to put a couple extra shims in it so that when we tighten down the nut for the first time that it has slack in there on purpose so we know how much slack to take away one of the things you have to watch out for is where the pinion is machined and i'm going to get a close-up so you can see this ledge right here where the pinion, where the uh, crush sleeve sits at, has a pretty healthy radius. If you'll notice when I put the crush sleeve on there, and I don't think you're going to be able to see it in the camera, but there's a gap in there, okay? Because the crush sleeve doesn't have a matching radius and it won't sit down all the way. You have to watch out for that because that also will eventually cause failure uh, because this thing will wear and it will pick up that slack and then of course it starts chewing the gears up. So there's a couple ways you can address that. You can take a die grinder to it, put your radius in there, you can, you can take a big uh, countersink, you can put a, a chamfer in there, which is what we're going to do. So I'm going to take care of that real quick and then we're going to pick it back up with um, setting the crush sleeve. Okay, so now we've got the crush sleeve in there with some extra shims so we can see how much space we need to take away from it. So we're going to repeat the process with the indicator, clamp it on the side,
put it up here, see how much movement we have, and we're going to take some of that away. Okay, so we set it up the same way. We took about half of the movement of the indicator as far as the travel is concerned. We just want to see how much this thing still moves by picking the pinion up. Looks like we're in the neighborhood of 20 some odd thousands. Uh, how about 20 exactly? So we're going to take it apart. That'll give us an idea of how much shim we can take away from it. Okay, so we're, we checked the stack of shims that we have and we're somewhere in the neighborhood of about 61 thousandths thick total. And we want to take as close to 20 away as we can. Okay, so we went back and forth. Um, we ended up changing the pinion shim after all and come to find out that the problem was actually the pinion bearing not being seated correctly, uh, which kind of threw some of our measurements off. And if you recall earlier, the crush sleeve shim uh, seemed to be pretty thick when it really shouldn't have been. So nonetheless, we got all that ironed out. Uh, the pinion in play right now with the solid crush sleeve in place is around a thousandth of an inch or so. Turns nice and smooth. Um, I'm going to roll this thing over. We already got the, the backlash set and the pattern established. So I'm going to bring the camera in for a close up so you can get a, a look at what, get a look at what that looks like now. All right, after that major debacle of getting all the shims lined out, uh, we finally got this thing with a, uh, a pretty good pattern. I think, yeah, you can see it right there in the camera, it looks like. Um, down to around 6,000, 6,500 lash. Uh, real good, smooth pattern towards the inside of the tooth. So I think we're going to call that one quits. Um, we, may, we may move in. Um, the next video is probably going to be the uh, putting the control arm brackets and things like that on it and getting it ready to actually go in the car. We are done setting up the gears. All that's really left for this is to put the axles in it, which is pretty straightforward. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's how we set up the gears and um, get the solid crush sleeve set up. That is a major pain in the ass in some cases, uh, much like this one. So uh, thanks again, everybody, for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Next video control arms, getting it in the car, and we're getting close to getting this thing ready to put on the ground and get to the fun stuff. So thanks everybody for stopping by. Stay tuned for the next video. If you haven't, like, share, subscribe, comment, and we will see you in the next one.